And our next speaker um, is, um, is a, a, a different speaker than is in the program. Um, today we have uh, Luca Chiari from Ryoko Rikyo University in Japan, who is going to speak on observation of positron annihilation-induced iron desorption from a titanium oxide surface. You hear me? Okay. Maybe I'll have to raise this. Okay. Okay. I guess you can hear me now. Thank you very much for the introduction and. Um, as Birgit uh, just stressed, so this talk was supposed to be originally given by uh, Tachibana-san, but unfortunately uh, he could not make it, so we apologize for that. Um, and um, so, yeah, today I will uh, talk about uh, positron annihilation-induced uh, desorption from uh, TiO2 surface. Um, so quite a few people collaborated to this um, project. So Tachibana-san and myself, and um, we have a master's student at Tokyo University of Science, Professor Nagashima and Hirayama, who are here in the audience. So this is the outline of my talk. Um, so first of all, I will uh, present uh, about electron and positron and stimulating induced desorption, uh, what it is. Then I will present some experimental details, our uh, experimental apparatus for the time of flight measurements of positron and electron stimulated ion desorption. Then I will present um, the results of our measurements, or I will show our time of flight spectra, uh, the energy dependence, and also um, the desorbed ion yield that we extrapolate, we, that we obtain from those uh, measurements. We also performed some electron stimulated uh, desorption measurements, and so we can compare uh, the positron and electron um, measurements. Finally, I will summarize the talk and then talk about uh, future uh, experiments. So uh, when we have uh, a beam of electrons impinging onto a solid surface, there is a bunch of processes that can happen. Um, the desorption can happen, dissociation or reaction with the atoms and molecules of the solid surface. And all of these processes are important in understanding the behavior of the surface atoms and molecules, especially for targets um, that have industrial applications. But of course, it also it's very important from a fundamental point of view. So we focused on the, the desorption process. And in particular, if you have electron stimulated ion desorption, um, so when you have electrons impacting on a solid surface, this is one of the outcomes that can happen. So they can cause ion desorption from the surface uh, layers. And this process in general is called uh, diet. So it stands for desorption induced by electron, uh, electronic uh, transitions. And this process has very important uh, fundamental and technological applications. Um, briefly, uh, I'll just mention here that the diets process involves both excitation of valence levels and also core hole creation following Auger decay. Um, the electron stimulated ion desorption has been extensively studied from a range of uh, material surfaces. Uh, in particular, though, uh, electron stimulated desorption has been studied for TiO2. Um, and the reason why is because uh, TiO2 is considered as a canonical uh, material for studying diet, process, diet processes. So in this figure here uh, on the slide, you can see uh, an STM image of a TiO2-0111 surface. Uh, you can see that here the surface oxygen atoms are arranged in sort of like a row uh, configuration. And um, the black means uh, stands for the oxygen uh, vacancies. And the same uh, image here on the right is um, after um, bombarding with uh, 300 dV uh, electrons. And these uh, electrons can cause the desorption of the oxygen atoms from the surface. And so you can see that there are many more 
vacancies uh, in the, on the surface of the TiO2 surface. So um, in this paper in particular, where this image was taken, was published in Science in 2007, um, they um, estimated that if they bombard the uh, TiO, TiO2 surface with a beam of 300 dV electrons, more than half of the surface oxygen atoms are actually desorbed because of um, the electron-stimulated desorption. Um, now, how does the actual um, ion desorption happen? So, uh, Knotek and Feibelman, and in their 1978 paper, proposed um, a mechanism for the oxygen O plus desorption from the TiO2 surface. So, in their measurements, they noted that um, the threshold energy for uh, the O plus desorption uh, by electron stimulated um, 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 in, in, by electron, electron incident um, beam corresponds to the excitation energy of the Ti3 plus 3p uh, shell, which corresponds to about 33.6 electron volt. And um, so the 3i3p uh, core hole is then filled from, by electrons from the O2p orbitals via an, an interatomic Auger process from the neighboring O2 minus lattice. So if three electrons escape from the O2p valence orbital as a result of uh, a double interatomic Auger decay, then the, ion, the oxygen plus ion in the lattice can be desorbed from the, from the surface due to Coulomb, Coul Coulomb uh, repulsion between the surrounding Ti4 plus ions. Now, people have studied um, uh, ion desorption from uh, the TiO2 surface with using electrons as a, as, a pro as a probe, but no one has ever done this uh, using positrons. And um, Gleb has given in the previous uh, talks a very good introduction uh, about positrons, so what they are, so I will just quickly um, Remember here that positron is the antiparticle of the, of the electron. They annihilate with electrons, and the results of the annihilation is the production of two back-to-back -back gamma rays if this happens in vacuum. And these gamma rays have an, uh, an energy of 511 keV each. So if you have a slow positron beam incident on a solid surface, like a TiO2, then the positrons um, some of the positrons can diffuse back to the surface, and um, these positrons can annihilate with uh, one of the electrons from the atoms or the molecules in the, um, in the surface. And therefore, these positrons can remove one of the electrons from the surface atoms. So this basically uh, summarizes what I've just said. As a consequence, of course, of the annihilation, two gamma rays are produced. So, as a result of this, in turn, the positrons can induce a similar uh, diet process to uh, the electrons, and so O plus um, ions can also be uh, desorbed. However, um, for positrons, um, there are two processes of uh, desorption that can occur. So, one is very similar to um, the electron simulated desorption. So if you have positron impact ionization, this can cause desorption in a similar way. And also, as I just said, given that positron can annihilate with electrons, desorption can also be induced by a positron annihilation and with, the, with the, an electron on the surface. And so new information from this second process can uh, be inferred this kind of process. So, so far, as I just said, no experiments, unfortunately, exist for positron simulated desorption. And also, there is very little information from a theoretical point of view. However, recently, in the last year or so, we successfully um, observed ion desorption from uh, the TiO2 surface uh, using, induced by positron annihilation. So, I will talk uh, a little bit about it during my talk. So briefly, I'll just present uh, experimental setup. So we have a slow positron uh, generation system at Tokyo University of Science. So we produce a slow positron beam using a sodium-22 source and a tungsten mesh in conjunction with a trochoidal liquid B filter. 
The positron beam is guided by a magnetic field of about 100 Gauss. The beam intensity that we obtain is about 10 to the 5 positrons per second. So the target, as I, again, is a rutile TiO2 surface. You can see in the picture um, more or less the geometry. Um, so the TiO2 surface is um, held by the molybdenum holder. The surface was, of course, cleaned uh, by repeating annealing at 1,000 Kelvin. And um, the reason for choosing a TiO2 is that there are many uh, electron simulated desorption measurements out there in the literature uh, because TiO2 is often considered as a model system for uh, diet processes, but also because uh, TiO2 is considered a very promising material for solar energy conversion and a prototypical material for fundamental studies of metal oxide surface reactivity. And also, uh, the Chemical, electronic, pro and optical properties, of course, of the surface depend strongly on the presence of steps, vacancies, and other surface defects. So, uh, positron and electron uh, indu um, ion desorption, induced ion desorption, is, uh, is a very interesting process to understand uh, um, how um, the, the, the physical properties of this surface change. So, this is a schematic of our measurement uh, technique. So we have our low positron. Um, of course, all this is, uh, is in a vacuum chamber. We need uh, ultra-high vacuum. We can reach a, ba a base pressure of about 3 to the 10 to the minus 8 Pascal. So we can produce a slow positron beam, as I explained before. This positron beam is guided by a magnetic field. It's incident onto a TiO2 target. And um, however, uh, we, um, we have a voltage bias between the target and ground of about 300 volt, which means that the positrons are, of course, decelerated by um, this target bias. And therefore, uh, the incident positron energy on the target is given by the transport energy of the beam minus 300 EV. Um, so the annihilation gamma rays that results from uh, the positrons annihilating with the electrons on the surface of the TiO2 um, target are then detected by a sodium iodide detector. And this is, of course, connected to a high-speed digitizer and a, per, and a computer. And um, the desorbed ions are uh, accelerated because they are positive. So they are accelerated by the, by the bias on the target. And they are uh, then deflected and, uh, by um, potential difference between these two um, plates here. And um, they are directed to the MCP, where they are, um, of course, collected. And um, the, um, the ions are, of course, uh, very massive. And uh, all of this is an, a presence of a magnetic field. And therefore, um, the, the ions have also a perpendicular component um, in their, of their momentum. And therefore, they have um, a, a spiral. And uh, their zero radius is expected to be quite large, given their, that they are very massive. So uh, we can measure a time of flight spectrum simply by um, measuring the time difference between the annihilation gamma rays and the ion signal to the MCP. So these are some examples of um, the time of flight spectra of the desorbed ions from the TiO2 surface at incident energies between 3 electron volt and 44 electron volt. I should notice that the spectra were normalized uh, to the intensity of the, gamma ray, of the annihilation gamma rays at time equal 0. So you can clearly see at about a uh, time of flight of 2.3 microseconds that we observe a peak. And through simulations of um, using, uh, for instance, simion, we can um, we can infer that these ions are oxygen plus ions desorbed from the surface of the target. And um, therefore, we can say that we have successfully observed positron simulated ion desorption from a TiO2 surface. I should note that um, the O plus peak is also present at energies below 34 eV, which as you can remember for previous slides, is the threshold energy for the electron-stimulated desorption. So I should remember that there are two possible contributions to the ionization, which leads to the 
uh, O plus ion desorption. So first of all, um, energetic positron impact can induce ion desorption and in a similar way uh, like uh, electron impact. And also ion desorption can be caused by positron and electron annihilation. So if we look at um, the measurements that were performed in the past using electron simulated ion desorption. Um, so again, uh, the ion desorption threshold for O plus is 34 eV. This corresponds to the three Ti3P inner shell ionization energy. Also, um, O plus can be the desorbed ionization of the O1S, Ti2S, Ti2P, and Ti3S shells. In this graph here from uh, Knotek and Feibelmann's um, paper, they measured uh, the time of flight spectra for electron simulated ion desorption of O plus, and then they obtained the o oxygen plus ion yield as a function of the incident electron energy. And you can see that the ion yield increases very rapidly as a function of the energy above the threshold of about 33.6 electron volt. Therefore, they, in, uh, they deduced that the ion desorption of oxygen atoms is caused by inner shell ionization. So in the case of positrons, um, we believe that given the similarity of the two particles, we, we can say that oxygen desorption is also induced by core electron ionization. However, at energies below the threshold for the core el electron, uh, el electron ionization, we also observed uh, a desorption um, peak. And therefore, we um, believe that these oxygen atoms are desorbed via positron annihilation with the core electrons of the TiO2 surface. So via the other process that is possible with positrons. Now, if you extract the, the O plus ion intensities from those time of flight spectra and plot them as a function of the positron energy, we can see that above about 7 eV, the uh, O plus ion yield is nearly constant as a function of the energy. And this is, of course, very different from the electron case, where people in the past have observed that the O plus ion yield in instead increases very rapidly as a function of uh, the incident energy. And therefore, um, we know that the annihilation probability does not very much depend on the incident energy, and therefore we believe that the positron annihilation induced desorption strongly depends on the annihilation probability, but not on the incident uh, positron energy. Now, um, we can estimate the probability of O plus ion desorption uh, via positron annihilation only by using this simple formula here. Sigma is given by the ratio of the number of uh, desorbed ions to the total number of incident positrons. If we do this for an incident positron energy of 24 eV, we obtain sigma equals 1.8 to 10 to the minus four. However, sigma can also be obtained using this formula here, so delta times P, where delta is the probability of positron annihilation with core electrons, and P is the probability of ion desorption after core hole creation. So if we assume that delta is 0.05% and P is 44%, and this is based on uh, electron impact calculations and data, here are the references, then we obtain a value for sigma which is 2.0, 10 to the minus four, which is consistent with the value that we obtained from the present experiment. Therefore, from this comparison here, we believe that in the positron stimulated ion desorption, uh, mechanism, the positrons, some of the positrons diffuse back to the surface and may be trapped at the TiO2 surface, and then the positrons can annihilate with one of the electrons on the surface, and this can cause uh, the O plus ion desorption from uh, the surface. Um, we also measured recently positron simulated ion desorption from uh, higher energies, so we went up to energies of about 400 eV. And if we do that, we actually see that the O plus yield appears to increase as a function of the incident energy. As I said many times before, uh, two desorption processes are 
possible with positron. So simply positron impact ionization or positron electron annihilation. And um, we still have to understand uh, what is the contribution of these two processes to the increase of the ion yield as a function of the incident energy. Because of course, at the lower energies, as we have seen before, it didn't seem that the ion yield depend on the incident energy. However, as you go to much higher incident energies, it seems like the ion yield might actually increase with the incident energy. So further measurement are needed uh, to be able to understand um, what's going on here. Also, I should note that at energies, uh, impact energies above about 80 electron volts, we have also observed a peak which corresponds to the disruption of H plus. And of course, given that and on a TiO2 surface, no, uh, H, no hydrogen atoms should be present, then we believe that these H plus ions are actually desorbed from probably residual gases that are, are absorbed on the TiO2 surface, perhaps water. And um, we don't observe this peak at the lowest energies. Therefore, we believe that this H plus ion desorption is mostly due to um, impact ionization. However, uh, as, as I said before, more measurements are needed and perhaps we still have to answer the question whether positron annihilation actually plays a role in H plus um, desorption or not, especially at the lowest energies where um, we, we have to um, run probably the measurements for a longer time to be able to build up a much better statistics which might um, give us an information whether there is actually a presence of peak of, a, of an H plus peak here or not. Um, finally, we also uh, carried out electron stimulated desorption from TiO2 surface because we wanted to compare with um, the position um, measurements that we did. And we simply basically installed uh, an electron gun in our um, vacuum chamber and um, did some electron, um, electron beam measurements. So this uh, time of flight spectrum is at an incident energy for both electrons and positrons of 400 EV. These two spectra were normalized to the same number of incident particles to make them comparable, of course. And we can see that um, the H plus peak is about the same size. However, the O plus um, peak is much bigger for uh, positron impact than uh, electron impact. So if the O plus desorption was due to a positron or electron impact ionization process, then of course we would expect the intensity of this peak to be pretty much uh, similar to the two, uh, for the two, um, for the two positron and, and impact ionization, and impact incident. Uh, however, um, we see that this peak is much higher. So we, the question is, does actually the positron electron annihilation um, induced desorption play a role in this or not? Again, we have to uh, perform. It's, it's not clear to us yet, so we have to perform more measurements, I think, uh, at different uh, incident energies to be able to understand uh, what's going on here. So finally, Summarizing, we have investigated positron and um, stimulated ion desorption process from a TiO2 surface using an ion annihilation gamma ray coincidence time of flight spectroscopy. We have carried out the first successful measurements of ion desorption induced by positron annihilation with surface electrons. We have compared the positron stimulated ion desorption measurements to corresponding electron stimulated ion desorption measurements. And as I pointed out, there are still some unanswered questions about the ion desorption mechanism, the ion desorption yield, and the ion desorption energy dependence. So in the future, we want to perform measurements to higher incident energies, perhaps up to 600 or 700 eV, if that's possible. Perform further measurements with using electrons so that we can compare to the positron measurements. Perhaps there is a plan to perform the same ion desorption experiment using a higher intensity positron beam, for instance, using a LINAC in Scuba in, 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 uh, in Japan. And also, uh, we are planning to, me to measure positron stimulated ion desorption from other materials, which might be prob probably uh, very interesting too. Finally, I should uh, thank one of the other graduate students who 
uh, collaborated uh, in this project, so Yabuki Kung. And also, I should mention that this project, this work was supported by uh, three grants in aid for young scientists and scientific research from the Japan Society from the promotion of science. Thank you very much for your attention.